In this video, we're going to quickly examine another electron donating type group. Uh, here we have the aniline molecule. Oh, before we do that, um, we want to point out that in videos 4 through 19, we examined a lot of different resonance systems. Uh, they were not aromatic, but there were definite um, uh, principles that we had developed in those videos, and we're going to be using that um, that uh, knowledge foundation. So if you have the time, I think you'll find it worthwhile to watch these videos. And again, um, we're assuming that everybody is comfortable with SP hybridization, SP2, SP3 hybridization, and the different um, geometries that are involved. Okay, let's take a quick look at aniline. Again, I say a quick look because what we're going to do is exactly what we did in the previous video. The reason being is here we have a benzene group. The molecule that is attached to it has a lone pair of pi electrons, just as it was in the preceding video, except in the preceding video, It was oxygen that had the lone pair of pi electrons. But the way that these pi electrons from nitrogen interact with the benzene ring is the same setup. So to draw the canonical structures, it's the same type of thinking as what we did in the previous video. Here, these two carbons have a pi bond. They each have contribute an electron. Um, this carbon has a pi orbital with its electron in it. This carbon has a pi orbital with its pi electron in it. The pi orbitals over merge to form this pi bond. Now we imagine this carbon swipes the pi electron from this one. And in so doing, it will have then a lone electron pair of pi electrons, and it will have a negative charge. So the canonical structure would be like this. So this carbon has a lone pair of pi electrons and a negative charge. This carbon has no electrons in its pi orbital. The electron was swiped by this one. But the nitrogen has a lone pair of pi electrons. So these can come in. One of these electrons can fill that p orbital of carbon and the other one stays with the nitrogen, and they form a pi bond. But nitrogen donated both electrons to form this pi bond, so it now has a positive charge. And then to get the other canonical structure, we imagine here this carbon swipes the pi electron from this one, so it has a lone pair of pi electrons, and it will have a negative charge. That leaves this carbon then has an empty p orbital. But this carbon here, that has a lone pair of pi electrons, so it can donate both of them to form this double bond like this. This had a negative charge, but since it contributed to both electrons to form that pi bond, it no longer has a negative charge. And that's our third canonical structure. Of course, nitrogen 
has a positive charge. And again, we're looking at this, and we're seeing that there is separation of charges. So it's not ideal, but it is permissible. And unlike hydroxyl with oxygen, nitrogen is not quite as electronegative. So the fact that it has a positive charge um, is, and before with phenol, oxygen had the positive charge. Oxygen is more electronegative, so have this having the positive charge would be less ideal than the nitrogen having the positive charge. So this would be a somewhat better resonant system than what you saw with the phenol molecule, because nitrogen with a positive charge is less electronegative than the oxygen that you saw in the last video. And again, you might be thinking, well, it looks like there should be another canonical structure, because here we have a pi bond. This carbon could keep the pi electron from this one having a negative charge. And again, if we do that, So this has the negative charge. But this carbon, oops, let's be careful here. OK, we're supposing here's a double bond. This carbon keeps the electron from this one, has a negative charge. But now this carbon has a lone pair of pi electrons. This carbon now has no electrons in its p orbital. The electron I did have was swiped by this one. This has a lone electron pair, so it can donate it to form the pi bond. And there's no longer a negative charge here, because that carbon put up both electrons to make that double bond. But this is actually identical to this. If we just turn this around, flipped it over, we would have that. So this is. So there are three canonical structures, not four. So let's erase this and try to get all three canonical structures into view. And again, it's the same situation as it was with the hydroxyl group. We have negative charges here or here. It's equivalent. That's the ortho position and here. So again, when you're attaching a uh, molecule to the benzene ring, and that molecule has a lone pair of pi electrons, it will increase the electron density of the benzene ring in the para position and the ortho positions. And then in future chapters, when you just um, learn more about the chemistry of benzene, you will see that increasing the electron density at these positions affects the chemistry of the benzene ring in a very specific way. Uh, OK, uh, that's it for this video. What we will do in the next videos is consider the opposite situation. Suppose that we have a molecule attached to the benzene ring. And maybe this molecule has an empty p orbital. Could it draw off some of the electrons from the benzene ring? That's what we will examine in the next video. Oh, a reminder that uh, the playlist now for all the videos is at the uh, website digital-university.org.